So the big concern about the carbon tax relating to the economy has now fallen away, so we're less concerned about economic issues. It's also important to note that the single issue of unemployment has come up more strongly. It was 2 per cent and it's risen to 5 per cent. So 5 per cent of Australians say unemployment is the biggest issue facing Australia. Concerns about the environment have been decreasing slowly but surely all this year. And we see that um, if we take the concern about the environment, it's now running at 16 per cent. Indeed, if we exclude the carbon tax as an environmental issue, that 5 per cent of people who said the carbon tax is the biggest issue, <coughs> only 11 per cent of people now say that environmental issues are the most important problem facing Australia. Dramatic turnaround. There's a new line in that chart. It's the sleeper issue. And that's the sleeper issue that we've been watching for some months now. It's a kind of softer issue. It's about government, it's about leadership, it's about politics and human rights. And this issue has been growing. And we now see that it's gone up 3% to 32%, almost equal to the economy. And this increase is due, it's driven predominantly by increased concern about refugees and asylum seekers. In fact, the concern about refugees and asylum seekers is now the single largest issue for Australians, with 14 per cent of Australians, up from only 5 per cent in July, saying asylum seekers and refugees and border, patrol, border, border control, that whole issue with both sides to the argument, is now the most important issue facing Australia. So we've seen some real, real issues emerging and changing. Of course, all of these issues occur in sort of a much broader context, the context of Australia. And more than 10 years ago, Roy Morgan Research and many others anticipated that Australia was changing and that it would change, that Australians would actually face an increasingly complex society with a whole range of opportunities and threats. For instance, the role of women has changed, and the role of women has changed much to do with Australia. It's changed technology, education, the arts, wealth distribution, and those changes have all made a huge difference. When I first joined Roy Morgan in 1983, 20 per cent of people said women should stay at home and leave running the country to men. That's now down to a little over 7 per cent, the same 7 per cent that said they were very concerned about having a female prime minister. So the women's movement is still a movement as far as I can see. It hasn't suffered any of the um, setbacks that the environmental movement has um, faced, but I digress. Essentially at Roy Morgan, we measure all of these issues. We don't just think about them, we actually measure them. And with now data over 700,000 interviews and well over a decade, we're starting to see some clear trends. I'll just touch on a few today because I think they do put what we're seeing from the population, our concerns, etc., into context. First, we are better educated as a nation. And the change in education levels is dramatic. Um, Around 10, 12 years ago, 15 per cent of Australians had a tertiary degree. Now it's at 26 per cent. Now that really matters. That's not only a big jump, but it <coughs> makes a huge difference. It has far-reaching consequences, not only for the cost of education, the fact that kids are staying at home a lot longer, but it also changes the kind of work that Australians can do and want to do. It changes the kind of critical scrutiny that we will put our politicians and leaders under. So it has a whole, a whole range of um, implications. As a nation, we are much more open-minded on a whole range of issues. This open-mindedness is just growing and growing. So we see here on issues like whether homosexuals should be allowed to adopt children. Now 50% of people say yes. So it's unlikely that the gay marriage debate will go away. We're also seeing really strong growth in support for technology and, and the recognition of the value that technology brings to our lives. And that's coming through just not only in attitudinal data where 37 per cent of people say computers and technology give me more control over my life, it's, it's showing in all areas where we measure technology. We're more connected in all sorts of ways. This chart, probably a little bit hard to get your head around in one second, but essentially the key message is there are more mobile phones today than there are fixed lines. So you're more likely to be talking to a person, person to person, ringing them when it suits you and it suits them on the telephone, rather than calling a household and asking to speak to somebody at a particular time. 
huge implications. The majority of Australians now engage in community messaging sites like Facebook. It's not a niche, it's a majority. This thing is here to stay, no signs of it tapering off. And as a nation, we're much, much more focused on finance. Probably largely driven by enforced superannuation, but with superannuation, with a focus on asset management, wealth creation and protection, these things are becoming more important to Australians and we are looking at our finances much more seriously than we were 10 years ago. Everyone thinks about these financial things. And with that, more people are actually thinking about and worrying about the economy, their shares and what companies are doing. They're more financially. Our Australian people are more financially aware about companies. And we're thinking about more about what companies are doing as companies, their profitability, their wealth. We think of them as businesses rather than just suppliers of goods and services. So these are just some of the themes. There are many more, but they are the key ones that I think that are impacting on how we see the world today. We at Roy Morgan take these things and we think about what's going on in the world and what we see as the population's concerns, and we believe the big issues to watch are these. Unemployment. With unemployment at 8.6%, and double that among young people, and almost 2 million people either unemployed or wanting to work more, underemployed, unemployment is a major issue and 5% of the population now consider it's the biggest problem facing Australia. We've always thought that the key measures, if you could only know two things about an economy, track the unemployment and track consumer confidence. They tell you everything. Unemployment's a big issue to watch. The second one, Asia's position in the Asian region. Now the majority of Australians, 57%, believe that globalisation brings more problems than it solves. We run a business in Indonesia, 26,000 interviews all over Indonesia every year. I know what they mean. You know, globalisation is not an easy thing. It's not all a bed of roses. But there's little we can do about it. And when we presented a paper at the second Asia Law and Practice Conference about engaging with Asia, we made the point there's no question that Asia will hold the key for the economic future of the world for years to come. And we said, while it's crucial to realise that Asia is not one homogenous entity, it's a bunch of very, very, very different nations, it's just as crucial to recognise the commonality that unifies Asia. And that's an absolute single-minded focus on economic success. Asian nations may well compete with each other, but they all know that this is their great collective opportunity. Everywhere you go in Asia, boardrooms and dining rooms are abuzz with talk of the Asian century. Our time has come. We have a common future. When you set aside the sort of jingoism and frenzy and emotion, what we see is bilateral and multilateral ties are being strengthened within the region as we speak. Now, every single country in Asia is an opportunity for Australia in one way or another. But in real terms, the big three, China, India and Indonesia will drive the region and the world forward. It's the rapid change in these developing markets where new consumers are emerging out of poverty at an enormous speed. Millions, millions of these people wanting electricity, sanitation, roads, bridges, hospitals, schools, dams, power plants. They're all still in short supply. They all represent huge opportunities and the appetite in those areas is nothing short of voracious. So this is where the real opportunity lies for Australia. But make no mistake, we're not the only one who's noticed that opportunity. These three countries will be the centre of attention for other Asian giants like Japan and South Korea, and the old tiger economies like Thailand, Malaysia and Singapore. Increasingly, they will feed each other and they will feed off each other. They aren't just talking about it slowly and steadily, bilateral trade within Asia is growing as these new consumers multiply. Now in a brief discussion I had with Sydney Meyer, who, who is part of the Asia Link, a major dialogue between Australia and Asia, he pointed out that for every dialogue that Australia is involved in, in Asia, there will be four that it's not invited to or involved in. For Australia, these are challenging times.